Man, I, this is a long video, but we're going through pretty much every single Glossier product here, so welcome. Do you like that I also wore a ponytail in this like I was wearing in my last one? Should this just be called my Glossier ponytail? Oh, hello everyone. I am back two and a half years later with an updated Glossier review. I'm gonna be talking about all of the Glossier products that I have used, and I've used most of them. So I've used all of their skincare products except the bubble wrap. I'm so upset because I went to the Glossier store and I forgot to get it. Just totally slipped my mind, but I can talk about every other product. And then when it comes to makeup, I have used most of the makeup. I'm gonna start off with skincare and the first thing that I am going to start with is actually something that I got when I went to the Glossier store. It is Future Do. I like the idea of this product. It's supposed to give you a natural looking glow, but I'm someone who has oily skin and so I already have kind of a natural sheen to my face especially as the day goes on this just made me look wet not like luminous it made me look wet and it also felt wet too i actually read reviews um, on the glossier website and one person said that this product made them feel like the equivalent of when their hair gets stuck in their lip gloss, but that feeling on their face. And I was like, oh my God, that's me. That's how I felt throughout the day. I was literally like wiping up my face because I just felt wet. But I do think that this could be really good if you have dry skin. Next up, the Glossier Super Serums. One thing that has changed with the supers is that they are bigger now. So they used to be 0.5 fluid ounces and now you get one fluid ounce and I do appreciate that they did that and they didn't change the price because I was probably one of the most outspoken people. Like every time I talked about Glossier Super Pure, I was like, but the thing I don't like is that it is so small. I really appreciate that they have taken customer feedback into consideration because I am sure I am not the only person who was talking about that. The downside is now I don't like the super. So I have never really liked the super glow serum. I just found that that did nothing for me. Super bounce, I was just kind of like meh, whatever about it. Now I just don't like it. I don't find it hydrating at all. And sadly, my beloved Super Pure has been reformulated and it doesn't work in the same way as the old formulation. So it's bigger now, but it doesn't work for me and I am so sad. And Super Pure for me really helped with breakouts and soothing my skin, preventing breakouts. It was like a game changer skincare product for me and now I don't have it. Anymore. Also, I don't have every single product that I'm going to be talking about because I have used a lot of this stuff over the last two and a half years, but I can still talk about it. So the first product that I don't physically have with me is the Balm.com. Basically, I think that these are like an upgraded version of Vaseline. They're like okay to use and they remind me a lot of the Kiehl's Lip Balm number one. I have noticed that they don't really provide long-term hydration. They really are more protective than hydrating. So if it's like really windy or cold outside, this will help like protect my lips, but it's not really hydrating them. Like I've tried wearing the original overnight and I feel like it doesn't really do anything for my lips. I will say though, I do think birthday cake is super fun. I love the sparkle in it and it has a really fun flavor. So if you're looking for something that's like whimsical, go with that one. Milky Jelly Cleanser. So this is another product that has also received an upgrade. They now make it in a larger size, which I appreciate because it's a face cleanser and if you're using it every day, you're gonna go through it pretty quickly. I love the scent of Milky Jelly Cleanser. It smells like rose. It's a really gentle, light scent. And every time I, I use it, I'm just like, 
Oh, amazing. This is a super, super gentle cleanser. It doesn't lather or foam. It doesn't sting my eyes, which I really appreciate. The downside to this cleanser is I've noticed that if I try to use it every single day as my daily cleanser, as the only cleanser that I'm using, I start getting a buildup of blackheads on my face. So I can't use this on a daily basis for an extended period of time, but I do like it during periods of the year where my skin is drier or the weather is drier. I find it to be soothing, but I do have to alternate it with other cleansers. Oh man, Solution. Oh, this is one of those products where I gotta stay away. Solution is Glossier's acid exfoliator. So there are AHAs in here, BHAs, PHAs. This is one of those products that I've noticed is very polarizing for people. So they either really love it or they experience something that they really didn't like. And I'm on the end where I experience things that I really didn't like. So pretty much immediately after starting to use this, my skin was red and irritated. This is a product that's supposed to help with breakouts, but it actually made me break out more. My skin just wasn't happy using this at all. It was just irritated, breaking out, red, basically all of the signs of like, stop, don't continue using this. Invisible Shield is Glossier's sunscreen. So this is an invisible gel sunscreen. So when you put it on your face, it's totally clear. This is very lightweight, which I appreciate, but I don't like that the product is so small, especially if you are using this on a daily basis. And I found that I had to use more than one pump. So if you're using this every single day, which I think is the point, you would go through this really, really quickly. And I also found this formula to be really drying on my skin. So especially as I started using it every single day, my skin just started feeling dry from it. So. I don't love Invisible Shield. It like does the job, but it's not a sunscreen that I would choose. Milky Oil Cleanser. So this isn't a cleansing oil like I thought it was gonna be. I thought it would be a traditional cleansing oil where you put it all over your face dry and then you wash it off and all your makeup is off. It's not that. It reminds me of the more old school eye makeup removers like from Lancome and Alme that are like oily and you put them on a cotton pad or a cotton ball and then you wipe your eyes and your makeup comes off. That's what this is. It did take off my makeup, but I did have to go through multiple cotton pads and I was only wearing waterproof mascara. So this one was definitely a disappointment. For me. Now we're getting into the moisturizers. I'm gonna start off with the Priming Moisturizer Rich. I love the smell of this moisturizer. It smells so good. It smells like lavender, which I really love, but uh, I'm sad because my skin doesn't like this moisturizer. I found it to not be hydrating enough, but I did really like the texture. I loved that it was like thick, but it wasn't satisfying when it was on my face. I just felt like I had to keep putting more on and it was never enough. So that's a bummer for me. When it comes to the original priming moisturizer, that was something that I just didn't really like at all. This is a moisturizer that on their website says it's anti-redness, but for me it actually caused more redness and irritation. And I'm guessing it's because of the vitamin A that's in this moisturizer, which is also known as retinol. My skin doesn't love retinol. And I learned this over time after using retinol and wondering, why does my skin burn a little bit? Why is there redness? Why does it feel weirdly tight and dry? And I realized it was from the retinol and it just makes my skin super, super sensitive. So I don't like 
using things that have retinol in them at all, but especially a moisturizer. And I just learned that over the years after using different products that had retinol in them because it is a pretty trendy ingredient, but it just doesn't work for me. And when I realized that there was vitamin A in this product, I immediately knew that that was probably the trigger for me. Also, the priming moisturizer reminds me of the Ombreo Lease moisturizer, which is like the famous French brand and now you can pretty much find that moisturizer everywhere the packaging reminds me of it the texture but i don't think ombre lease has vitamin a in it zit stick this is something that in the last year if you have been watching my videos you've seen me talk about zit stick i bought this pretty shortly after it came out because i'm like anything for pimples i'm here for it i want to try it um and Zitstick is their pimple pen, so it has a benzoyl peroxide acne treatment in it, and there's a little stainless steel ball at the tip, and you have to twist the other end to get the product out. I have to say, I did not like the packaging at all. I found it super gimmicky. I just want a tube where I can squeeze out the product and put it on my zit. Like I don't want the whole like twisting thing because I found myself I would just be like cranking, like waiting for product to come out. And then it would come out in a weird way where there was like the stainless steel ball but then the product came out in dots around the ball and I just found it to be very uneven and so I would just put it on my finger and then put it on my face. So. Not a fan of the packaging. You also don't get very much product and there are so many benzoyl peroxide acne treatments out there where you just get way more product. Moon mask. Now, if you had asked me when I first purchased moon mask what I thought of it, I never would have predicted that I would love moon mask so much because I feel like this is not a product that people are like, I love Glossier for the moon mask, but that's me. I love Glossier for the moon mask. I like keeping it in the fridge and I love just like lathering it underneath my eyes. I just put like a big chunk underneath my eyes in the morning. It's super soothing, really hydrating. It's also really nice all over your face. If you are experiencing dryness, I just really, really love this mask. And it's cool because as it sits on your face longer, it turns invisible. Big fan. The other mask that Glossier makes is the Mega Greens Galaxy Pack. This one was okay, but nothing to write home about. Like, it did a good job, but it's not like fresh Umbrian clay where I'm like, yes, that, my friends, is a deep cleansing mask. But I do like that it didn't dry out my skin. I did like that part. Last but not least for facial skincare, the Soothing Mist which is another one of those products where I'm like, no, 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 I can't use this. And I'm bummed because it has the rose scent that Milky Jelly Cleanser has that I really love, but I can't use this face mist because the first time that I used this, I sprayed it on my face and it had to have been only a few minutes later, my face was burning. It was red, it was stinging. I didn't use it for a few days and then I was like, let's try this again. It seems a little weird that a face mist would do this to my face. So I tried it again and it was definitely the face mist. The exact same thing happened again and I don't know what it is, but it just makes my face turn beet red like almost immediately. It's Things, especially around my eye area and I'm just bummed because I love the scent so much and I would love it to be soothing but is it is the opposite of soothing for me now we're getting into body products I think the lotion feels like a basic body lotion to me the um, main issue for me is the scent it's an orange blossom and neroli scent and this is just not my cup of tea. I just find it to be way too overpowering. And because I don't like the scent, I don't like that it lingers, but if you like the scent, then it's probably really great. And the body wash has the same scent. I do like that the body wash is an oil cleanser. So it starts off as an oil and then lathers up to be really rich and creamy, but 
I don't like the scent, so I'm not gonna like using it. And that's the main thing for me with body wash and lotion. I need to like the scent. It just doesn't work for my skin composition, but I know that there are a lot of people that really, really love this scent. Scent is something that is super personal and we all have different bodies and our bodies are gonna respond to scents in different ways as well. So that makes a huge difference and it just doesn't work for me. Speaking of scents, the Glossier You perfume, I know this is so popular. Like everyone I know loves this scent and I'm pretty much the only person that I know that doesn't like this scent, so I really feel like an outsider here. I wish I loved the scent because I love the idea behind it and I really liked when they had the solid perfume version. I thought the packaging was really cool. The issue that I had with this is that the top note for me was very powdery in smell and just lingered all day and I couldn't smell any of the base notes. So. Now, let's get into makeup. Oh, man, I, this is a long video. Another thing that I got at the Glossier store when I was there, forgetting all about bubble wrap. <laughs> I'm so upset that I forgot bubble wrap, but I need to let that go. I got the Glossier Pro Tip, which I was really excited about because I love black eyeliner, and it has a really fine pointed tip but I have to say that I do not like this. This is what the swatches look like. As you can see, it is not very opaque. What I wanna do is I want to compare it with um, this Tarte eyeliner. So this is the Man Eater black eyeliner. And this is the eyeliner that I have been using when I've been wearing liquid liner. I will say that it does take a bit of scrubbing to get the Glossier eyeliner off. So that means that it, at least it has lasting power. So here we go with pro tip. This side is the Tarte and then the other side is the Glossier liner. And the best way that I can describe the difference between these is that I feel like the Tarte one is just juicier, <laughs> which I don't know. I don't think I've ever used that word to describe a liquid eyeliner before, but I have been using the this Tarte liner for a while. So this has many, many uses and it still feels fresh. Whereas the Glossier one, I'm like shaking it and like really trying to get it to be just more opaque and more black. Like I can see my skin through it more. It's just not as dark and opaque and pigmented as the Tarte liner. The Glossier liner also dries glossier. So I like a matte black liner. There are so many great black liquid liners out there and this just doesn't feel like one that I would recommend. Moving into the lip gloss, I have used the clear one and I've also used the red lip gloss. Um, I use the clear one more though and this is really just kind of like a nostalgic product. It's like the clear lip glosses that if you grew up in the 90s and early 2000s, like that's what it reminds me of. So it is fun to use in a nostalgic way, but it's really not something that I have wanted to incorporate into my everyday makeup routine. But it does look nice on its own and on top of lip products, so it just kind of depends on what your routine is. If I had to choose one thing that was like the biggest shock to me, it would be Brow Flick. This is Glossier's brow pencil and it actually looks very similar to the Pro Tip. Like they might actually be the exact same. They look identical. I have this in my brows today and I love it. I was expecting this to be like a marker, but because this marker is like sheer, it allows me to be super precise and it's not a super dark line. So I can really get into the areas of my brows that I want to fill in a little bit more. And I actually find that I use way less 
product because it's just so effective because I can be so precise. I can do my brows faster. I feel like I'm using less product, which I really like. You can get a thick line out of it. You can get a really, really thin line. I love this. Speaking of brows, this is boy brow. I have gone through many boy brows over the years and I do like boy brow. I feel like it's a great brow product for sculpting your brows, adding a little tint. They also have a clear one, but I have stopped using it just because I feel like it's very small and it dries up very quickly for me. So I can't like use it as long as I would like to, even though I like the way it looks. I have other products that last way longer and do something similar. So I feel like now I really love the brow flick and using that with a clear brow gel. Lash Slick. So I have Lash Slick on today. It is Glossier's mascara, and this is not a waterproof mascara, but I actually really like Lash Slick because it reminded me of Maybelline's Full and Soft mascara. It takes your natural lashes and slightly enhances them, but it's not like a super dramatic effect. It has little fibers in it, that are lengthening, which I really like. I love this for days when I just want a little something extra with my lashes, but I'm not looking for anything really dramatic. I find that it holds a curl okay. It's not gonna hold a curl like a waterproof mascara. It washes off really easily. So this is a mascara that you can wash off with like a milky jelly cleanser. You don't need to use an oil with it. Um, the only thing is I would say that if you are wearing this all day by the end of the day At least for me because I have very oily skin I just noticed like a little bit of smudging and by the end of the day. I'm okay with it It's like fine. Can you tell what I think of the cloud paints? <laughs> if you are going to go to Glossier get the freaking cloud paints because they are Amazing and they come in so many really great colors that work for so many different skin tones and shades. And one of the things that I love the most is that they really are like paint and you can mix any of them together. So I have mixed probably almost every combination possible. Not only do I have five different colors, but then I have so many other different combinations and they last a really long time. Like I only used a few specks of Dawn today and look at my cheeks, they're like, the dawn is here. I had to use a beauty blender to like blend it out and it's still very much on my cheeks. But I like that. I love that these are just so vibrant. They're so fun to play with. Generation G. I wasn't really a fan because I just found it to not go on really evenly. I much prefer the Fresh Sugar Lip Treatments that have like a sheer tint of color, which I feel like Generation G was going for, but like the matte version. And I think like the matte formula just made it like, I don't know, chunky. And it wasn't like a smooth experience putting it on. I don't like Generation G just pass for me. Now, moving into the perfecting skin tint. This is something that I'm also wearing today. I love the skin tint. And I know that a lot of people think the skin tint is pointless because it really doesn't provide very much coverage. I would say that skin tint is more of a blurring product with a very slight tint to it, but it is so incredibly sheer um, that when you are picking out a shade, you don't need something that exactly matches your skin because it really just melts into your skin and is so sheer that it's not like a full coverage foundation where you need an exact match. What I really like about the skin tint is that it's super sheer. I can 100% see my skin through the makeup and it provides a light blurring effect, but I can see like pimples that I have, I can see freckles on my face, I can see the texture of my skin and I like that because for me, I am someone who went from always wearing full coverage foundation and I couldn't stand seeing any kind of like scarring on my face or acne on my face and now whenever my skin is going through whatever it's going through, whether it's totally clear or I have breakouts and scarring, I really try to look at my face and 
love myself on that day. This is a product that is between nothing and tinted moisturizer. And I like having that option because there are a lot of days where I don't wear makeup at all. And then there are days where I wear tinted moisturizer, but sometimes I want something in between and that really fills the gap for me. Still have the same standpoint on Halo Scope. I have tried Halo Scope multiple times because I know so many people love it. People kept telling me, you just got a bad one, you need to try a new one. So I have bought new Halo Scopes and every time I am like, no, this is not what I want. It feels like Elmer's glue stick to me. I do not like it. If I try to apply it directly to my skin, it just feels like it gets stuck. When I try to use it on my fingers, it just doesn't feel smooth. It feels hard and sticky. I don't like it. So I've just resigned myself to not liking Halo Scope and I'm not gonna buy another one. Stretch concealer, I haven't used stretch concealer in a while and I think that shows that it just wasn't like a must have for me. It was okay underneath my eyes, but I prefer other things that are more hydrating. I did find like throughout the day, it would break down on my face a little bit. Wowder is another thing that I used a lot for a long time and I only had one Wowder and I recently just was like, okay, I think this Wowder is done. So it really lasted me a long time. There's a lot of product in it for what I was using it for, which was just a light finishing powder. It didn't really have any coverage to it. It reminded me a lot of the Laura Mercier setting powder, but it did have like a little bit of tint to it. But then I went back to using the Laura Mercier setting powder and I was like, oh my God, this is a night and day difference. The Laura Mercier powder is just so incredibly fine and Wowder is very fine, but the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder, that is just always gonna be like a holy grail for me. That is like top tier. Um, but Wowder was good. I thought that it had a super natural finish. Um, it didn't look super matte, but it also, I didn't look like wet throughout the day like I did with Future Do. And I felt like it just worked really well with my makeup too. So Wowder is a good product. I like it. Glitter Jelly. So this is part of Glossier Play. They're very, very small, but I'm not using glitter every single day. It's definitely more of like a special occasion product for me and I love it. So I actually used this in my recent one take tutorial. So if you wanna see what it looks like on my eyes, you can watch that. But this is what it looks like on my hands. It's a clear base with the chunky sparkle pieces. This is definitely like the way that I prefer to wear glitter. I want it to be big and chunky and I want it to have a clear base because I just wanna see the sparkle and then my skin underneath. So I love this a lot and it has great staying power too. But I do use a primer underneath, the NARS Eye Primer. Last product that I actually have is the Glossier Play Color Slide. I have this on my eyes today, I really, like this. Normally with eyeliners that look burgundy in the like pencil form, when I put them on my eyes, they kind of just look brown, but I love how this really looks like a burgundy color on my eyes. It's definitely long wearing. The only issue that I have with it is that it feels pretty dry when you're applying it. So it's not like the Urban Decay 24 seven liners or the NARS liners. There's so many like really creamy liners out there that are also long wearing. This is long wearing, but it's on the drier side. So that was the only downside for me, but I can still work with it. It's not like it's so dry that it's just tugging at my eyelids because I've had that before and that's not pleasant. The last thing is the Vinylit, Vinylit Lip Lip, Vinylic Lick, Vinylic Lip Lacquer. There we go. I did not like this lip product. I just found them to be thick, and glossy but sticky and I just didn't like how they felt on my lips. It felt like it was just gonna melt onto my face. I was not a fan. So that's everything everyone. I have no idea how long this video is but <laughs> 
it is what it is. I went through almost every single Glossier product, so I feel like that's an accomplishment within itself. I hope that you found this video helpful. I know a lot of people have questions about Glossier, especially because it continues to be one of the most hyped up beauty brands. And maybe one day I'll try bubble wrap. <laughs> so that's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I have more videos coming your way. I will see you guys next time. Bye.